Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies. On this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm interviewing Dr. Shiroko Sokic. She's a friend of mine, but boy, is she a fascinating gal. She is a medical doctor who was in the track to go be a surgeon and decided that maybe that wasn't for her. So she got into Chinese medicine and here we are 30 plus years later, she is still working blending Western medicine and Eastern medicine. In this podcast, we're talking about love and its role in your health and how you don't need a diagnosis to heal and why it's so important to really think about the signs your body's giving you as a message to you that things need to be switched, that energy could be fixed, that we could work on balance and perhaps get better versus trying to think about how we just need a diagnosis and then we can get better. So nevertheless, this is a fun podcast and I hope you enjoy it. Dr. Shroko is one of my great friends. We're also going to be talking about her book too, Healing When It Seems Impossible, Seven Keys to Defy the Odds. And let's introduce you to Dr. Shiroko Sokic. Hey, health junkies. I have a friend of mine on today, and I'm excited because it's always fun to bring friends on because we can just chat and vibe and talk about health and, and how we see things and, and what's going on. So you guys are going to get a real good intro to alternative medicine from a perspective of a medical doctor and a naturopath talking together today. So Dr. Shiroko Sotich, because I can never... <laughs> Get your last name right. <laughs> I'm going to try it again. We're going to repeat. That's how I always mess things up. <laughs> I didn't even tell you this before, too. Don't worry. I can edit all this. Um, I didn't tell you that I'll do like a full intro like of accolades and, and uh, your things. record. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. Hey, health junkies. I have Dr. Shiroko Sokit, John, and I'm laughing because I have known her for over a year and I just realized I couldn't say her last name right. But here we are. We got it done. And we're going to have a great conversation about alternative medicine and really complicated cases that the two, uh, the two of us have grown to love. So Dr. Shiroko, welcome to Health Fix Podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. It's been a long time coming. We should have done this a long time ago, but but here we are. And, you know, as with any podcast, I love to start the story off of how people became doctors because I find it so fascinating as to what led you to wanting to take care of folks and and down this down this pathway of fun. Give us a scoop. <laughs> well, it started when I was five years old. And, uh, you know, my great grandmother was, uh, when I was a little kid, my parents split up when I was about three. And, uh, and so we ended up living with my grandma and, uh, with my mom and my grandma and my little brother and my great grandmother lived next door. And because everybody was busy, my mom being single and all that, my great grandmother was the person who took care of me. And I spent every day with her. I spent all my time with her and she just loved me. <laughs> and, and in my childhood and in my life, there wasn't a lot of that kind of love in available, right? Because everybody had whatever they had as their story. And uh, I happened to be at her house one night and she collapsed in front of me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it, she was right next door to my grandmother's house. So I ran over there and I got my grandmother because I couldn't wake her up. And and then they called an ambulance. And, so, and for some reason, I remember them taking her out through her window of her house, I guess, because the door wasn't big enough. Um, but that was the last time I ever saw her. Mm. And, um, you know, in, in that time in Germany, I lived in Germany, uh, little kids didn't get to go to hospitals. So I never got to see her. And I think she was probably in a coma because she had a stroke. And then uh, a few days later, my mom came and told me that she had died. And I remember the devastation, you know, the loss and the devastation and the feeling of, uh, and then the next thing that happened was my brain was like, because my mom told me her heart stopped beating. My brain started thinking, okay, how do you fix a heart? And I started imagining <laughs> fix a heart and 
And really that's the day that I decided to become a doctor because I wanted to fix that. I wanted to bring her back. And, and, you know, my whole life and pretty much since then has been dedicated to this concept of what does it take to get ill, to get well in a moment? Like, what does that take? And that has always been my, my driving, my driving drive, if you will, to, to figure out, you know, what does it take? to make somebody well and to be well. And, uh, and, you know, so like the first time I got to save a life and that was my first sort of thought was because my grandma, my great grandma died, um, was in surgery was, uh, I was a third year medical student. I was doing a rotation in the County hospital ER, which is a crazy place in Seattle. (laughs) And, um, and, uh, my, we had a patient that came in with a gunshot wound and we had to take him to surgery and, and, and literally put our finger in his heart and save his life. You know, like it was that graphic. And I was like, Oh my God, I got to save a life. And so from, you know, I had always been sort of family practice, healing, alternative medicine thinking, because I always, there was something in me, even from childhood that believed in the healing power of plants and, and natural healing. I don't know where that came from, but that was sort of an intuitive, like it had always been there. But then in this moment in the ER, when when I got to, it, it was like, oh, I want to be a surgeon. <laughs> and so, so then I went through that whole process and I got into surgical residency and, and uh, two years into surgical residency, I began to realize that I wasn't saving lives and I wasn't really having the experiences that I was seeking. Like that whole idea of helping somebody in the moment of struggle. And I had some of my own personal things. So then I went on to, uh, I took a month off from my residency. And during that time I had a dream. If you stay in surgery, you will die. Whoa. And it's a longer story, but it's in my book. So you can see it in my book. <laughs> read that. But but um I was like, whoa. So <clears throat> you know, I I I already knew I didn't love surgery. I, you know, like they told me you gotta love it more than anything else. And I didn't have that with surgery. I had that with Chinese medicine, which came <laughs> later. <laughs> But right around that time, so I decided that I had to leave my residency and I didn't know what else to do. I had a big ego of being a surgeon and going back to family practice didn't fit my ego at the time. So I was like in a quandary. Well, I I thought, okay, I'll go work in the ER until I figure it out. And then right in that little gap, I was given a book, The Web That Has No Weaver about Chinese medicine. And that is when I fell in love. And, and that has been the enduring love of my life is Chinese medicine. Because as soon as I read all of the information about how Chinese medicine works and, and what it is, is like, I, I start a whole new world, mm-hmm. a whole new life. And, um, you know, I decided to go to acupuncture school. I actually decided to chase down the author of the book and, and find <laughs> him and, and learn and learn from him. But then I met a guy in my hospital who was a respiratory therapist, but also an acupuncturist. And he became my mentor. And so one thing kind of just always led to another. And along, you know, in the end, I here I am, I've been practicing for 30 years in Santa Rosa doing Chinese and Western medicine blended and, you know, doing both. And um, what I love about Chinese medicine is that whole idea that you can get well without having a diagnosis, you know, the, the <laughs> quote unquote diagnosis. And I think that's my whole, why I've ended up and you too, uh, ended up doing what I call mystery illness or helping people with things that nobody else has ever figured out the answer is because you don't necessarily have to figure out the answer or the diagnosis in order to get well, you have to find balance. Mm-hmm. So that that's what I've based my practice on. And I still have that drive to help people in an instant. So that's another thing I love about Chinese medicine is you can put a needle in somebody and, and they'll feel better right then mm-hmm. in that minute, mm-hmm. you know, so instant healing. 
I think that's what got me too about Chinese medicine. I mean, yes, the web that has no weaver game changer, game changer book. For those of you guys that are listening, I'll put what that book is in the podcast notes, along with Dr. Shiroko's book, which we'll get to here in a second, um, in the podcast notes at drjcrossnd.com. But the big thing that I, I agree with you is the the immediate change. You know, I'd watch my mom, you know, I, I got into this because of my mom going through cancer. And, you know, I was 15 years old going to the visits with her and I would see like her skin color change. She would be pale and ashen. All of a sudden she's back to life. And it's like after an hour of having some needles and chilling at 15, I'm like, what the? I want to do that. I've never seen any other doctor, you know, turn around like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So no, it's cool because I, I'm sure you've seen this too. In other cases, someone comes in and they're like, I'm really anxious. You're like, let me put a needle right here, here, and a couple in your ears. You'll be good in about five minutes. It's it's so much fun. It's so much fun to get that immediate reaction. Now, one of the things you were mentioning is is the complex illnesses and and this concept of they've been to every doctor. I have a question for you. How how you've probably had lots of people that have come to you that have been to millions of, uh, or not millions, but many specialists and doctors. Do you ever get a count on like the number that they've seen before you? And then been yeah. like, oh and God. 12, sometimes 20, yeah. But in the range of 10 to 12 doctors, they usually get fed up. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. then they come to you and, you know, usually my first thought is, oh gosh, I'm not going to be number 13. I don't want to be, I don't want to be the, you know, I don't want to be that one. So, you know, we're going to figure this out. Now that brings us to the energy side of things that brings us to the balance side of things, because it does seem to me that when someone has a mystery illness and it's come down to the point where no one can give them a concrete, this is what's wrong. We have to look at that. But at the same time, it's hard to convince someone right? With the conventional model of, I need a diagnosis to know what we're working with. How much of a pain in the rear has that been for you to try to explain, we don't need a diagnosis. We just have a plan of how we're going to bounce you back out. Uh, I mean, I've been in practice now for 30 years. So uh, I have a reputation in my community. And, um, and so to some degree, I don't have to do that anymore. Uh, and, you know, I seem to have people who are real interested in understanding what's going on with themselves energetically. Mm -hmm. I just want to point out this picture behind me. I don't know if you can see it, but you, there's a horse inside there. Ah, And I love that picture because it's kind of like what we're doing with a person who has a mystery illness is, you know, there's all this grass in the front and you mm -hmm. can't really see its face mm -hmm. very well, but you can. I mean, if I, if it didn't have glare from my window, you would <laughs> see the beautiful face. And, and that's kind of what this process of healing from something undiagnosed or, you know, is there's all this stuff in the way mm -hmm. that keeps us from being able to get to the root. And when we start to remove the things that are in the way, the natural health can shine right and that and that is what we're doing both of us is is we're removing the blockages we're removing the even the emotional blockages the things that cause you know chronic health problems have emotional components and physical components and spiritual components and to like to begin to to unwrap that package and look and heal those different elements and um yeah that's what we're doing we're just taking away the blockages and we're helping that person get to balance and i have a theory you know because things can get complicated in this world but i have a theory <laughs> called the triangle of wellness which is one of the the physical component of getting well which is your hormones your nervous system and your immune system are the triangle that if these things are functioning then your body will have the tools that it needs in order to heal. Mm -hmm. So often, if I can't find a diagnosis, I will start to balance hormones, work on the nervous system. Usually I use acupuncture for the nervous system and the immune system, you know, various different things. And there, what's cool 
I always love when things come together. But what's cool is that certain things will help all three, like vitamin D or omegas, you know, things like that, that are fairly simple, will help all three of these legs of the triangle. And then, you know, digging down further to find various other things that keep it from getting, keeping that person from getting well. It's no. incredible. It's incredible how much vitamin D has a huge impact, right? Like, yeah. Mind blowing. Mind blowing yeah. to me. Yeah. It what, is. Yeah. What should, you know, I think a lot of people always want to know a little more about vitamin D in terms of frequencies of what you see in terms of issues with absorption compared to so absorption from the sun, being able to get vitamin D from the sun. Some folks sometimes will even have a struggle to get the vitamin D that they take in orally to the body, you know, to the tissues, things of that nature. Have you found that as a whole, folks do better when they've got the vitamin D supplementation at a higher range than what's kind of recommended you know, with the RDA kind of stuff and, and the thousand, I know a lot of people in supplements have like the 1000 IU as being the basic. Have you found that most people need maybe at least two to three times that, you know, based on testing and things of that nature? Yeah, I have. Yeah. And even in California, that's what I want to <laughs> want to know. Well, here's what's funny is there are people who take no vitamin D and don't get outside that much who have high vitamin D levels. Yeah. I have one person that is like that. And, and I never understand how she gets her vitamin D, but she goes outside, okay, you know, maybe twice a week or something, <laughs> but, but she has high vitamin D levels. Um, but then there's other people who will take 10,000 IUs a day and still have low levels. And, and, you know, there is a, a SNP that regulates how your body handles vitamin D, a genetic. So a SNP, you guys in but for those of you who don't know, it's a, a little tiny program in your genes that tells your body how to do certain things. And, and there's been a lot of research on genes and figuring out what they do. And so one is that vitamin D doesn't, some people can't absorb vitamin D or they can't use it in a certain way. Or, and so there's all these different individual factors, right? Um, so, and, and what's stupid is that, you know, insurance companies have stopped letting people measure their vitamin D, which is just like, why you can get toxic on it. If you take too much, <laughs> if you don't have enough, you can be sick. Like there's a reason that we should be able to measure vitamin D because it, it needs to be known. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, no, it's <laughs> I, I could, I could spend this whole time that we're talking about what insurance companies do, but I won't because that's not what we're about. <laughs> oh, I will just say the vitamin D thing and getting kickbacks this year in 2024, I'm not happy with. And then when I say kickbacks, guys, I'm like kickbacks from the insurance company, not wanting to pay the vitamin D when you run it on a lab. Not cool. I agree. I agree. Not cool. So definitely vitamin D, you know, if we switch it back to, to the game changing effect, I think that a lot of people who are depleted, you know, obviously we test, but a lot of people who are depleted in life, they've got something going on. Oddly enough, I do find that vitamin D most of the time tends to be a factor. Is that kind of what you've seen too? As a whole, Min yeah. minus your gal who was- part of it, yeah. <laughs> it's part of it. Uh, I've, you know, interestingly, I've also had patients who couldn't tolerate taking it as a supplement. Mm-hmm. And one in particular, I remember that she had a pretty complex health issues for like a year. And she's been my patient for years and years, but, but she couldn't tolerate vitamin D. And then somehow she figured out how to tolerate it. And now she has higher levels and now she feels better. So, so, you know, again, vitamin D is not the end all be all. And sure. definitely that's not our, the subject of our conversation, but it is one of the things that affects all three legs of this triangle, the hormones, the nervous system and the immune system, you know, so, mm -hmm. and I like things that I like, I like crossovers from Chinese medicine to Western medicine. I like, you know, the things that come around in a way where there's this synchronicity. I love synchronicity. So uh, those are some of the things I pay attention to is the things that cross over and the things that make a difference on many levels. 
let's talk about Chinese medicine a little bit, because sure. it's one of the things I haven't had anyone really talk too much about on the podcast and, and really how it is helping your, your triad there in terms of the hormones, the immune system, you know, and, and the body as a whole, what's, what have you seen be the most effective? Give, give us the whole story. What have you seen? Oh my God. I love Chinese. I still love Chinese medicine. I could talk about it for, you know, the cool thing is it is based on the idea and, and it, this, I feel this to be so advanced and it's been around for 5,000 years, but when the idea that we're made of energy and energy travels through our bodies in certain patterns, and there are things like in my 30 years of doing this now that, that I have seen Western science catch up with, you know, like <laughs> that we have 12 organs and the pathways of energy of those organs travel across the surface of our body, but also on the inside. And this, it's such a beautiful, like, I just, I'm in love with it. It's, it's such a beautiful way of looking at health and the answers in the ancient texts, like one of the style of acupuncture that I do is based on this woman who is from Japan, who has studied the ancient texts and she has found little keys, you know, like where you can test a point on your body to find out if there's an imbalance in that part of the body or in that organ. And then you can correct it with another point. And like, literally I can fix a headache in a minute. Like they can have a headache now and it won't have it by within five minutes of coming and laying down on the table, things like that, or digestive problems or like hormone problems take a little longer because they're more chronic, but, but so like literally you can access a person's energy and, and help them be balanced. And the whole principle in Chinese medicine is that when your energy is out of balance, there are problems. And there are pathways of that energy traveling and all of that. And I think because I was so young when I started, because I started studying, like I left my surgery residency and I went to acupuncture school <laughs> wow. and I started working in the ER. So I went to work in the ER and acupuncture school at the same time. So in some ways I was learning medicine and Chinese medicine at the same time. And so for me, I work with both together all at once and I have the the understanding of both together. And so, um, but I love using Chinese medicine because when you look at the bigger picture, the energy, that's where you find the root cause, right? Is where is the energy imbalance? Where is the imbalance in this person's body? And being able to ask that question and then being able to find it by feeling the pulse and looking at the tongue and feeling the belly and, you know, like, literally checking the places in the body without using a lab, but feeling where that imbalance is. And then I use labs as a secondary to like confirm, okay, so this is what I feel. This is where the imbalance is. And this is what we're going to test to see, you know, what's, how can we get that connected? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of it. We're taking some of the old school methods that have been kind of forgotten about. I was just talking about this with a friend the other day that, you know, we, we treat unfortunately in the medical field a lot so heavily on labs now that we're missing what's going on with the person. And that's part of why I still do not stop going back to Tacoma because I need to get my hands on people. I need to see them. I need to, you know, like the screen's one thing, but I don't get, I don't get it all from the I screen. Know. Yeah, I, know. I need yeah. to, I know there's like that touch. I need to, it's not so creepy. I need to touch my people. Um, yeah. but, but it really is. And you were talking about belly diagnosis and, and so is this horror type of belly or is this a different type of, of, um, training that you've had for looking at the abdomen? Uh, it, so there are certain points on the abdomen that correspond to different parts of the body. So like you can palpate, in the epigastric region, right above the belly button, that is connected to the dantian. Then the dantian is that deep, like the hara. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're, if there's another point on to the left side of the belly button, kind of below the belly button, that's connected to detox. And then another point connected to the immune system and points connected to the liver. And you can touch these points. And either if there's tension there or tenderness or a difference between how it feels everywhere else, 
that you can see, oh, there's a detox issue right now, or your immune system's out of balance, or your liver's out of balance. And you can, and I can get that feedback from your body directly. And then of course, it, the pulses, you know, is not just how fast is your pulse, but what it feels like. So what organs are out of balance when an organ, and then I have a whole connection to like, okay, these, this organ does this and this and this and this and this, and every organ in Chinese medicine is much more complicated than Western medicine. <laughs> uh, because we, each organ has an emotional function, a spiritual function, and many physical functions beyond what we know in Western medicine. I'll give an example. The liver, the liver is my, my organ. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm very familiar with it. So the liver regulates the smooth flow of energy in your whole body. So that means like if you have muscle tension or certain kinds of headaches or, or ligaments that get injured easily, the, lig the liver regulates the ligaments and tendons, the smooth flow of energy in your whole body, your menstrual cycles, the emotion of anger, <laughs> <laughs> and it's the master sergeant of getting things done. And, and spiritually, it is the space between your physical body and your higher self. And so, and, and that was a big learning for me, that understanding of what does that mean going from your physical body to your higher self and, and being able to connect to your higher self. But we can't go into that. That's too long. <laughs> but anyway, when you have problems with your menstrual cycles, most of the time the liver's out of balance. Mm -hmm. Or if you get migraines or with perimenopause, a lot of people get high blood pressure or things like that. That's all connected to the liver. And so then to, and oh, and the liver also regulates your sight and your eyes. And so if you have problems with your eyes, that could be connected to liver imbalance. And that is not what you would learn in Western medicine. But then when you start talking, and that's why it's so beautiful to have two tools like that. <laughs> when you start talking is like, okay, this system is out of balance. This is how we're going to understand it better. And, you know, depending on the person and when they come in or what is going on with them, we can see, okay, eye problems might have something to do with anger about something way long ago, or maybe something going on right now. But, you know, like, what would, and nobody would put it together. Like your eyes might reflect anger on some other level, right? But that is what is so beautiful about like the levels of understanding. And that's part of what's in my book is like, <clears throat> I actually give all this, like I have two chapters, one that's about listening to your body to ask it what it wants to tell you. And the other chapter is about uh, choosing your own unique lifestyle. The listening to your body, a lot of it is connected to this whole concept of Chinese medicine and what the organs do in Chinese medicine, because depending on where your symptoms are, you actually get a clue of what's out of balance in your body and you get to listen to that. Mm -hmm. And then I provide the tools for how, how you use that information, you know, and I think one of the exciting parts. So. It's, it's fun. It's fun. And I think, you know, on some levels, and, and this is how I tell people a lot, especially women, when I'm going about, about talking about the periods or talking about menopause, I mean, Chinese medicine is a beautiful way of explaining things that Western medicine really doesn't because the hormones all in the liver. So we're making those guys, right? Yes, we're signaling other places, but really we're creating them in the liver and, and looking at the hot and cold side of things. So yin and yang, and we're looking at, you know, if we have excess or deficiency kind of things. And so it's quite fun to really be like, okay, menopause is often a deficiency of your cooling energy. And, and so like, you're just not put having, you just don't have enough water to put out your fires. So, you know, and if we can, we can expand on that so much in the liver and the emotions and, and things, but it's fun, especially, I don't know if you do this, do you draw out pictures for people of the, the energy balance and how they're, where they're at in that? Oh. No, I go like this with my hands. <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> I, I, I've drawn, I've drawn a lot more than I ever thought I ever would in my practice and then handed people, um, drawings of this is what I, well, this is what's going on. I'm sure they're like, 
first time they meet me, they're like, okay, this chick's kind of weird. Um, but nevertheless, it's, it is something fun. Now you had mentioned in your book, you were talking about connecting, you know, and, and really being able to connect to yourself and, and seeing those symptoms for what they are and helping you to interpret. Now, the hard to diagnose symptoms, the hard to diagnose conditions. What do you find Chinese medicine wise tends to be more prevalent in folks? Do you find liver? Do you find kidney? What what do you tend to see in terms of trends? Gut? Well, so to me, gut is so the way I layer it. Um, I'm just going to lay out the chapters of the book real quick. Um, yeah. So that people understand of the layers of what I believe about healing. Mm -hmm. So there's seven keys and the first key is love. And love is important. And since we're doing this interview in February, <laughs> which maybe won't air then, but, but nope. <laughs> love is important because love is what holds our whole entire being together. Um, so our existence is, is comes from love and, and it's the most healing power of the universe. And there's many ways to utilize love in healing, which that's what that whole chapter is about, including a bunch of science about it. And the second key is the physical diagnosis of so the physical element of healing, which is partly the triangle of wellness, but also the gut um, so I, I have the triangle of wellness, which means, you know, the, the immune system, the hormones and the nervous system, but then there's a thing called the root cause and the root cause is maybe something that comes from underneath and disrupts those three systems. Okay. A lot of these gut or hidden infections or, uh, toxins in our environment or those kinds of things that would disrupt the energy. And one of the most important things, of course, is emotions in Chinese medicine, because, because having anger underlying everything that we do, we may not be aware of it, but that is what's affecting our organs mm -hmm. or having, you know, childhood issues that maybe we didn't know about that could be affecting our whole organ systems. Um, so so that's the second chapter. The third chapter is uh, learning, finding your own unique lifestyle. And there's all these different ways to play with that, you know, like taking away certain things from your diet and doing certain exercises, finding what works. And that, that dances with the other chapter, which is listening to your body. And so how do you learn to listen to your body? How do you learn to use the information your body gives you. And as time goes on and those things change, like what foods you tolerate change, what exercises you tolerate change, like all of that stuff. And how do you use all that information? So that's three and four. And then five is emotions and, and understanding what emotions play a role in what part of your body and why did that, why is that important? And what can you do about it? And then the fifth or the sixth chapter is never give up. Um, six and seven are the spiritually oriented ones. So the idea is that we are used to thinking about other humans as a lesson in our lives. You know, we know where many people have evolved to know they're spiritual people and, and that they're learning lessons and they're learning stuff by being here. And so we know that our relationships with other people and our relationships with our work and things like that, that they're a lesson. What we often forget, or it hasn't been brought to the forefront, is our bodies are our biggest school. And we are spirits living in bodies, and our spirit is always talking to us. And that is what's happening when your body's giving you something difficult, is if your body's giving you something difficult, your body's trying to tell you something. It's not your enemy. And that's the other element of love is your body is not your enemy. It is your best friend. It is talking to you all the time. It's just like though when you have a baby or a, or a puppy and it's talking to you, you don't understand that language. <laughs> like, so this book is kind of a, a, an interpretation of the language of the body. You know, it's like, how do you tune into that language? And then the last key is, uh, trusting the process. So if you have been to 12 doctors, how do you feel okay about seeing number 13, you know, mm. <laughs> lucky number 13. And, and how do you trust that journey? You know, like, cause, cause healing is a journey. 
And especially when you've had something difficult, it's not a, you know, I used to love this Dilbert cartoon that said, just give me a pill, you quack. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, we can't just give you a pill for anything difficult. It's it's not about the pill. It's about something deeper inside of you that wants to heal at a level that you have not experienced before. And so in that chapter, I talk about what does it take to trust that the journey you're on is the right journey. Hmm. It's not always easy. No, not at all. I think when, when people come to you after seeing that many doctors, they're desperate. And, mm -hmm. and unfortunately we do live in a paradigm of, of here's the pill and here's the solution. And unfortunately it's another thing I'm sure you see a lot of the time. And I know I'm guilty of it myself is sometimes I will be like, okay, this is the herbal alternative to the pill that you would get, you know, Western wise, but it's not going to solve the problem. You know, I always tell people it's not going to solve the problem or band-aiding at this point. I'm sure that's happened in your case too. Many times. To yeah. And you know, by the time somebody's seen 13 doctors, their trust is, a, is another issue. And here, here yeah. comes this weirdo who says, you know, this is a complicated issue and there are many layers. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, sometimes it takes, it took many years to get to this place and it's going to take maybe a year or a year and a half or two to get to a place where you don't feel that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And now you found something that is an amazing energetic tool, the oh, yeah. NES system. Yes. To to help kind of translate this a little, because I think when, you know, we're working to gain trust, it it is kind of difficult to be like, OK, here's the deal. You know, we have some energy work to do. We have some energetic levels to to work down. And, and you know, ultimately for folks, it's it's work to get healthy. You have to put the work in. Right. And so for a lot of people, they're like, oh, my gosh, can I have a boost on this? Is there is there a hack? Is there something that can help? And so the NES system, and so I'm going to have you explain it because guys, this is a really cool energetic way of treating folks. And I think like kind of like a little booster to the work that you have, that, that you do have to put in yourself, but it's a booster. So I'm going to let you take it away on this one and, and give us kind of the, the explanation on the NES and, and how it works. So, so uh, again, I love to give big, long explanations. So pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, again, we are made of energy. And so the whole principle, like there are many different tools available for understanding how our energy works. And in Europe and in Russia, in the maybe even as early as the 50s, people were exploring how do we understand energy in our bodies and developed tools and of course, I love that Chinese medicine is like the beginning of that whole thing, because that whole system of energy is, you know, there are meridians that end at all your fingers and toes. Mm -hmm. And so the first ways of studying energy were really by measuring the ends of your fingers and toes to see how much electrical potential was running through that pathway. And some, I think it was a German guy in Vol, and it was a Vol system. So, but there have been systems developed that study the energy of the body, and they become very, they have become very comprehensive and very advanced. And so now I'm using a system that actually can listen to your voice and read your entire energy, including your physical, emotional, spiritual, and possibly even toxins and environmental and food things that are involved. This is a complicated, like it's, and it took 30 years to develop this system. But, um, a guy named Peter Fraser and Harry Massey were kind of the guys who did it. And, and Harry Massey had chronic illness and, and, and he came along and met Peter Fraser and they, put this together, but it, a lot of it is based on Chinese medicine again, and about how to clue into what the, your energy imprint is telling yeah. the machine. I love it because it's like Star Trek. 
<laughs> and there is a device, you know, like for me, it's like, can you read your, like, you know, and uh, those of you who watch Star Trek, cause, cause there's that tricorder thing that reads the person and says, oh, this is out of balance and then fixes it. Mm -hmm. And there are even, they have it, there is a device that actually fixes the energy and it's just like, oh my God, <laughs> God I'm so excited. And the explanations within that are all based are based on Chinese medicine, but also on quantum physics. And so that's the advancement, right? Is the, the, like when you start to use quantum physics and you understand that energy, isn't just an ancient Chinese hoodie do thing. It is actually <laughs> explained in quantum physics and, and that quantum physics and Chinese medicine go together, you know, it's like, Whoa. <laughs> so um, and if you want, I can give you a link and you can do a scan on yourself for free and I'll give you the information and you can go do a scan and you can learn about it. But the idea is that not only um, do we all have energy at any given moment in time, but that that can be measured. And then, then that information, which goes deeper than acupuncture even goes to help correct imbalances that are in your deep core of the imprint of who you are, which is pretty wild. Yeah. It, I mean, she had me try it guys. And it was spot on in terms of the symptoms I was experiencing. I didn't tell Dr. Shroko anything. I was like, yeah, let's just try this. And then it came out and I was like, oh my gosh, it hit every single thing that mm -hmm. I had had little symptoms of my body telling me that yeah. were happening. Mind blowing, mind blowing. <laughs> so, so when people get this information, right? So we've got the information from the NES machine. Then the next step is using little more or less like homeopathic remedies. And, and right. so you're taking these drops. So let's tell folks how this is happening on the underlying level as you're working on acupuncture, as you're working on diet and lifestyle and all the other things. Um, so the, so the remedy, so what they did with all their research is figure out remedies that would help correct the energetic imbalances. And basically, and you'd have to read all the science because there's a lot of science behind this. This is not just made up. Um, but they use salt water mm -hmm. and imprint it with a blueprint of energy. So you're basically drinking salt water, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, but it acts like homeopathy in the sense that some people, like if you just take one or two drops, your symptoms will get worse and homeopathy often you'll get worse before you get better. Mm -hmm. That's how this sometimes works. And, uh, it's, uh, it's impressive what can happen with these infoceuticals they're called infoceuticals and then there's also a healing device that has like three tools for helping heal which is my like the the super duper healing device um so there's a lot to this whole system but uh yeah and and it is just another tool in a in a big tool chest that i have of, of ways to help people get better What's, what's the energetic tool? Is it kind of like they, did they hold on to it? What, give us the scoop. Like, how would you use that in the office? So folks can have a visual of what, what that would be like, like they're taking Well, I don't have it at my desk, oddly enough, but it's about as big as my phone. Okay. And it has three healing modalities. It has uh, what's called PEMF. So that's pulsed electromagnetic frequency. And so it, it emits healing frequencies. And there's a whole bunch of different programs in this device that like when you do a scan, it says what your energy imbalances are. And then it gives recommendations as to what settings you should use in order to correct those imbalances. So it's PEMF and then there's TENS and TENS is a way of sending a signal to an area that's painful um, to override the pain. And then the third thing, which is maybe the coolest of all, is that it actually, like when you put it on an area where you have pain or an Im imbalance, it actually reads the electrical energy across your skin, and then it inputs a signal to help correct the imbalance that it sends to the brain so that there's this brain to skin communication that helps correct imbalances. And um, 
I didn't know about this. Like when I heard about it, you know, when I bought the machine, I was just like, oh my God, this is the coolest machine ever. But then I, I learned it was even cooler than I thought. <laughs> and the technology is called Skinar, self-correcting, energetic, nerve, something. Anyway, like literally it reads what's going on because we are electrical beings. So you can read across the skin what is going on. So it reads it. And then it sends a signal to your nervous system. And then the nervous system sends a signal back to correct that problem. We taught about it. She was from Russia. And this the science for this is from Russia more than 20 years ago. They've been doing this kind of stuff for years, mm -hmm. you know, and, and like she showed a video, her husband had dropped a 40 pound weight on his foot and he had this huge swelling and wound and she worked on him and she, and she showed how it, the swelling went down in less than a day and he was able to walk on his foot in two days. And, you know, like this is an injury that would have taken weeks. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah. pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. There, there's so many things out there that I feel like, unfortunately, we've just not been, let's say, introduced to maybe because of the way the medical model is here in the U.S., whatever it may be. There's politics. There's a lot behind it, you know big pharma, you name it. But the reality is, is that guys, there are some really cool things out there. And I can't wait to try to get out and see Dr. Shiroka so I can try the machine out um, in person <laughs> because the, the infoceuticals were great. You know, I actually, I, I felt really calm from them. I felt like, okay. And, and really, honestly, my symptoms did go away. I, I did feel better. And you think to yourself, like salt water imprinted with energy, like we're just not, program to think that that's going to be a solution for you. And, you know, am I saying, is it everybody's solution? No. And this is where I would love for you to weigh in on, like you were saying, going back to the self, your, your chapters of, of diving into the mind and diving into working on your mindset and things of that nature. I love acupuncture because we can almost talk someone through something while having the needles in and helping to just kind of get that that process started. What are you doing in your office when you're working with someone on mindset? Do you set out different intentions with them? Are you providing different tools for them to read? It depends research? on who they are when they come in, you know, mm -hmm. and, <clears throat> you know, uh, sometimes I hold the mindset for them. You know, and that's a part of that agreement that you have with your healer is, you know, if you don't have the mindset at the moment, maybe I'll hold it for you, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that that's a part of why we are essential, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, in the relationship that because a lot of people think, oh, I can just go to Dr. Google and I can look all this stuff up and I can do it all on my own. And yes, you can. <laughs> You're only going to get so far because you cannot dig into your unconscious in the way that I can. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, or you can, um, I, I see you, <laughs> I see you from here. And so, yes, I, there's certain things I don't know. I don't know your story. I don't know, you know, a whole bunch of stuff, but, but I have this 35 years of being a doctor and, and the 30 years of acupuncture and all the tools that I have and my own health issues that I have played with for, you know, ever. And, and that willingness to explore. And so when a person like that comes into your life, there, the opportunity is to hold the space for you to get well. Mm -hmm. Not that I am the wellness, you are the wellness, but I hold the space until you're ready to use your mind in the right direction to do whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's, uh, I think that's a part of what is, you know, essential in terms of it's that healing relationship. It's why I call my website or why my, my office is called heart to heart medical center It's because it's from one heart to another. And, and that it allows the biggest opportunity of healing because there's love in that relationship. There's caring in that relationship and there's an openness that allows the energy to be passed through. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, I don't know about you, but I can do acupuncture on myself, but it's not the same as when I get acupuncture from someone else because their energy is contributing to mine. And I've had experiences when I'm having acupuncture. I have one friend that gives me acupuncture and I swear, not only is she giving me acupuncture, but her guides or my guides, something else is in the room. And sometimes I'll feel points that she didn't put in. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. <clears throat> yep. You know, and, but so that there's this electrical quantum physics relationship that comes from the relationship of working with a healer or working with somebody who can help you. And I think that's an important piece too. I absolutely agree. I mean, I think we need guides, but I also think, you know, in this day and age with AI and and different things coming into the medical space we're going to realize how important it is to have a connection with someone to guide you for your health. Because I don't know if anyone else has tried out some of the AI medical things. It's a whole different ball game. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, now that you can get your medicine taken care of on Amazon, um, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's great. And, you know, 2 a.m. you need something in a pinch or whatever, and it's going to, you know, be droned to your house or whatever in the future. But yeah. but the the point being here is like, if we want true change within our body, we need to be willing to to have someone guide us. I think that's that's the bottom line. Now, within your book, you, you told us the chapters. Do the chapters correspond to the seven keys to defy the yes. odds? So, so we've kind of went through those seven keys. Now we do have some new things and and this is where I wanted to bring the conversation is something cool that you're embarking on with HBOT. <laughs> and, and so hyperbaric chambers guys is, is kind of the HBOTs, the, the cool kids term or, or the short term for it. Now we all need things to just help boost us along the way. We also, you know, there, there, I shouldn't say we all need, but there's, it's beneficial to have things that can boost us along the way. And with, with HBOT and those different things that you're going to be offering, I would love to hear like what you're thinking in terms of translating it into some of your acupuncture patients. How would you mix it in? What's, what's your thought process for, for your future using your HBOT machines? You know, again, I'm always looking for what will make somebody feel better. Yeah. Uh, So there's temporary feel better and healing feel better where you stay better. Right. Um, And unraveling all those patterns. And there's so many layers to getting to a place of staying better. And even that is a journey, right? Mm -hmm. Go on and on (laughs) because living is really a journey of healing. But um, HBOT is hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And the idea is that you enter a a physical space where you get put under a a certain amount of pressure. So, So the space is sealed and then they pump it full of air or oxygen. And, and then it's uh, uh, the same as when you go diving. So uh, the original thing is when people had the bends after they went diving because they came up too quick, their systems filled up with nitrogen and they got real sick. So they had to go into high pressure oxygen in order to pump out the nitrogen that was in their system. And the high, but then we began to study that whole thing. And there's so many ways that high pressure oxygen can help your body. So one is, There are lots of places that all of us have poor circulation and chronic illness and aging and all kinds of health problems have to do with how our cells are functioning. So by giving high pressure oxygen in a contained environment for a certain length of time, you increase the circulation of places that don't always have good circulation you provide oxygen to tissues that maybe don't have oxygenation. And most importantly, it has a direct effect on the mitochondria and the mitochondria are the powerhouse of your cells. That's where your body gets power. So it can help with fatigue, head injuries, brain problems, you know, like places, uh, chronic uh, gut issues. Uh, I have a couple of patients who have ulcerative colitis that hasn't responded to any other thing. And um, there's a lot of research that shows that it can help with ulcerative colitis because there's a theory that there might be not enough oxygenation in the colon. Mm. Um, 
So all kinds of health conditions and, and, you know, the big one right now, cause that uh, is, is longevity and, and healthy aging. So the people who want to stay young and look young and be healthy forever, that is, you know, like the big, mm-hmm. the big ball. Like I went to the longevity fest in December and, <laughs> and, and, you know, probably 10 vendors out of a whole bunch of vendors, but a lot of vendors who, who were selling hyperbaric oxygen therapy machines. So it's... there's many ways to raise your energy. So there's many ways to access your energy and there's many ways to raise your energy level, many tools available and finding the right one is, you know, I, I think one of the biggest clues is if you suddenly one day wake up and you read an article about HBOT therapy, or you hear this conversation <laughs> that we're having, oh, and then it tweaks your interest. That's a clue. Your body's giving you a clue, you know? So like this simple tools for listening to your body so that you, you go away from this conversation with something is if you hear something in a conversation or you read something on the internet or you, you know, like you're in this mode of frustration and I, I'm not getting well, or you just hear something and you go, oh, wait, what is that? Then you go after that <laughs> and you look into it and you see, does it resonate? Is that something that would work for you? And you ask the people you trust does, would this be something that would be good for me or would it not be good for me? You know, <clears throat> and that's how you one learn to listen to your body. It's one to one clue. If your body says, Oh, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> that's, I mean, that's incredibly insightful because I think a lot of people will think, you know, Oh, maybe I'm being, you know, too spur of the moment on, on this, but really I, I do agree with you that something energetically brought it to you, to your attention, to be able to, to pay attention for sure, for sure. And just like when, you know, 35 years ago, somebody gave me this book, the web that has no weaver. I wasn't looking for a book. I didn't even know anything about Chinese medicine at the time. You know, like I was totally Western trained. I was totally Western oriented, never even heard of acupuncture. And this book appears in my hands, you know, <laughs> like, and then what made me open it? What made me read it? You know, it began a lifelong love affair. Mm-hmm. Not with the human, with a concept, but Okay. <laughs> I I understand. I completely understand. I mean, Chinese medicine just made sense to me on a level that nothing else had made sense before. Yeah. yeah. And and the the concept like you were saying of of what we can do to raise our energy and then circulation. I really do think that circulation and raising our energetic vibe are two of the really foundational things to helping with longevity, health in general, things of that nature. Right. And the, the the big point, what you just said, Chinese medicine, if you don't have any energy, there's no place to go. You got to have energy. Mm-hmm. So there might be other tools like hormones or supplements or diet or hyperbaric that give you a little bit of energy so that you can then play with how to move your energy. You know, like, so when you're running on empty, you got to do something. Mm-hmm. Yep. The boosters to help things move, you know, synergistic effect, booster effect, you know, all of these things are just kind of layers and, mm-hmm. and added layers in, in the scheme of things. And boy, I just, if, if we can pass the information to anybody that there's more out there than just what meets the eye, there's a lot of really cool things out there that can be incredibly helpful. And definitely if folks are in the Santa Rosa area, they can come see you in person. So let's give folks like, guys, she's got her book, Healing When It Seems Impossible, Seven Keys to Defy the Odds. You can find that on Amazon easily. You can get it in paperback. You can get it in Kindle. I mean, good stuff here. I definitely recommend you guys check it out. But she also can be seen in person in Santa Rosa. Give us a scoop on how folks can find you. I know you said your website, Heart to Heart. Yeah, my website is Heart to Heart Medical Center, and there's all the information, really, how you find me. Uh, if you're in California, you can come see me in person or 
I do remote work as well. Um, so you can do telemedicine if you want to. And yeah, there's, there's all kinds of tools available to help you get well. Absolutely. And I hope that we've given you guys who are listening, who are kind of thinking, you know, I've been through all these different docs, I've, I've seen all these different things, or maybe you know <clears throat> someone that's in that category, that there are solutions, there are ways to tap into your body's intelligence to help you um, to to heal once and for all. Talk yeah. To Yes. Amen. Right. All right. So Dr. Shiroko, thank you for, for coming on finally, after all these years, I appreciate it. And, uh, I, can, I look forward to hearing how, how the H bot goes in the office and I can't wait to try out the NES. So folks we will do a repeat podcast when I'm in her office and we get the little, the NES energy machine on me so that you guys can see what that's all about. So oh, cool. I can't wait. That means you're coming to visit me. That's what that means. That's what that means. <laughs> so folks, stay tuned for another episode here sometime in the near future. Dr. Shirko, thanks again. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, fellow health junkie. Thanks for listening to the Health Fix podcast. If you enjoy tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.